Well, good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I wish we could all be together to say thank you in person. You know, usually each Mother's Day at church, we give out a packet of seeds uh, for flowers to all the mothers. And um, this year, this is pretty much all I can muster is a picture of those seeds. But in all actuality, we do have some seeds at the church that you could come by and pick up when you come to communion service or another time. But uh, it really would be great to be together, but we're not. When I was thinking about what to say for Mother's Day, I kept thinking about how amazing our mothers really are. Not so long ago, most mothers stayed at home and raised their kids and took care of the house. We certainly have some of those still today, but there are becoming much. this is becoming much less prevalent. Many mothers are working mothers. They're, what's amazing to me is that they keep on doing all or at least most of the things that they have always done, and now they're working fuller part-time jobs outside of the home too. So as we talk about mothers today, I want to talk about three different things. First of all, I want to start with what is a mother's responsibility? A mother's responsibility first is to teach your, chil your children the Bible. You notice I said you teach your children the Bible. You know, it, this falls on both the mothers and the fathers to teach the children the Bible, but it is very important that we teach our children the Bible. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verses 12 and 13, it says, and God said, Assemble the people, men, women, and children, and the foreigners residing in your towns, so they can listen and learn to fear the Lord your God and follow carefully all the words of this law. Their children, who do not know this law, must hear it and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You know, we're also reminded that a young Timothy was influenced for Christ by his mother and his grandmother. And they taught him the scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, Paul writes, I am reminded of your sincere faith. He's writing this to Timothy. He says, which first you lived in your grandmother Lois and, in, and also in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now that it lives in you also. You see, that sincere faith that came from his grandmother to his mother and now on to him. James Hewitt tells the following story. He says this, he says, It was a rally day program at the church, and a little girl was to recite the scripture she had memorized for this very occasion. When she got in front of the crowd, the sight of hundreds of eyes peering at her caused her to forget her memory work. Every line that she had so carefully rehearsed faded from her mind. She stood there, unable to utter even a single word. In the front row, her mother was almost as frantic as the little girl. The mother gestured. She moved her lips, trying to form the words for the girl, but it did no good. Finally, the mother, in desperation, whispered the opening phrase of the memorized scripture, I am the light of the world. Immediately, the child's face lit up and a smile appeared on it. And she said with supreme confidence, my mother is the light of the world. Of course, everybody smiled and some even laughed out loud. Then they soberly reflected that the girl, in some ways, was not far from wrong. For the mother is the light of the child's world. See, mothers also need to be an example to their children. See, children learn by example. They learn by the things that they're exposed to. We must expose them to that which is right and godly. Our example before them must be the right kind of example. Mothers, your spiritual life must be consistent. If you want the same for your kids, it cannot be, you know what, today I'll do the right thing, but tomorrow I am going to skip it. No, no, a thousand times no. You see, children know the difference in whether or not we are sincere in our walk with Christ. And let me add this, it will have an everlasting effect on them one way or the other. William Morgan wrote this, he says, Mother, the dream that you have for the little lives God has entrusted to your hands can come true if it is God's will, and you help to shape it in love and Christian ideals. True mother's love is in miniature a form of the love of God. How vital and important it is for every mother to know God intimately and to set the right example for her children. And finally, mothers, with your responsibility is to tell your children about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Tell them and explain to them that Jesus died for them. Tell them about heaven and how we get there. Lead your children to Christ. Mother, there is no greater responsibility than the responsibility you have to teach your children about Jesus.
And certainly fathers have this same responsibility, but it's on the mothers too. We have a lot of single parents in our society today, and sometimes a large burden is falling on just one of those parents. If both parents are in the house, they should both shoulder this responsibility, and it is of utmost importance. The next thing I want to say is after we talk about a mother's responsibility, I want to talk about how our mothers are resourceful or their resourcefulness. It is truly an amazing thing to witness. In Proverbs chapter 31, 26 and 27, Solomon writes about a virtuous woman. Uh, now, the woman described in Proverbs is, is Solomon's virtuous woman. If you read all of her qualifications, it's probably not something that anyone can attain in full. But I have known many mothers that exhibit many of these qualities. He says this in just part of this section. I would encourage you to read the whole thing. But he says this, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. You know, mothers do so many things. Let's talk about some of the things that a mother does. And I, you know, I'm going to go pretty fast here, but I listed 40 things that a mother does. And trust me, this isn't even anywhere close to an exhaustive list. You could probably come up with many more, but here's what I listed. So things, mother, things a mother does probably on a daily basis, okay? So let's keep that as a filter. If they're doing all of these things on a daily basis, it could be uh, quite overwhelming. And so let's take a look at some of these. The first thing is she might do, wake the children or the child up. She serves dinner in her house. She wipes down the kitchen sides. She makes beds. She cleans the kitchen. She puts a load of washing on. She makes breakfast for everyone. She packs the dishwasher and or washes up the dishes. She gets children and child's children to brush their teeth. Well, at least she tries. She hangs out a load of washing, maybe, to dry. Now, maybe, or maybe she puts it in the dryer if you have a, a dryer in your house. She gets the children to get ready for bed. She packs up the lunch boxes. She helps the children or the child with her hair, with their hair. She gets the children to do their teeth again before bed. Again, she tries. She vacuums. She gets the child or the children dressed. She checks for any school or paperwork that might be in the backpack. She reminds family of the day's appointments and the clubs and the meetings that they may have. She gets the children to take a bath. She takes the child or children to school in the morning, maybe. She puts shoes and coats away. Oftentimes, she finds these shoes and coats in the middle of the floor where they don't belong as well. She reads with each child. She lays out their school uniform or clothes that they might have in their shoes. She tidies up the toys from that day. Or she supervises while the children do it, which sometimes is harder. She unpacks and washes the lunch boxes. She addresses any homework that needs done that evening. She picks the child or children up from school at the end of their day. She feeds the pets. She packs the child or children's school bags. And when I said feed the pets, she also feeds the husband often. Sometimes he's a pet too. She packs a bag for work. She writes in the children's homework books. She puts on the slow cooker or defrost something for, for, for supper or for tea. She reminds the children about having good behavior for the day. She prepares an after-school snack. She ferries the children to their appropriate places and clubs that they need to be at. She unpacks the dishwashers from the morning. She prepares sandwiches for the lunch boxes for the following day. She splits up any arguments. She rinses out the water bottles. She tests children on homework in the car on the way to school. And I'm sure many of you are thinking of so many more things that I could not list on these two pages. You see, that's a lot of things. And again, you could list so many more. I am sure there are some dads out there that do some of these things in their house too. And they should be helping on these things, myself included. I found an illustration that I think works well to describe some of the ways in which a mother operates. It says this, a mother is a maker, a mender, a moderator, and a teacher. She makes boxer pants and chocolate pudding, lawn sometimes order, castles, threats, promises, and rabbit suits. She makes horses heads from paper bags, little suits from big ones, new dresses from old ones. Sunsuits from kitchen curtains, small balloons from popped ones, stew from nothing whatsoever. She makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and peace when possible. A mother is a maker and a mender. A mother mends broken dish and broken hearts. Trouser knees, hurt noses and hurt feelings. Trouser knees, torn jackets and torn fingers, and trouser knees. She mends old sheets, old rose bushes, old baby dolls, and brand new trouser knees. A mother is a maker, a mender, and a moderator. She is a moderator in times of war, civil war, verbal war, 
insurrection, minor skirmishes, attacks from the enemy, in times of strife, in times of injustice, in times of temper, in times of hair pulling. A mother is a maker, a mender, a moderator, and a teacher. She teaches how to button buttons and how to say a prayer. She teaches how to hold a knife and a fork, how to hang up clothes so they sometimes stay hung, how to sit still in church. She can teach a love of books and of music. She can even turn a child's heart to God. But almost never can she teach how to close the door without a bang or how to come in without bringing in mud or how to pick up your clothes off the floor. A mother can count. She counts calories and blessings, pennies and children's heads in the car. But she never, ever counts sheep. A mother is immune to surprise, whether it is a glass of water in her desk drawer, a cat sleeping on fresh sheets in the linen cupboard, worms in trouser pockets, good report cards, bad report cards, split foreheads, split infinitives. Nothing ever really surprises her. But sometimes a mother reaches despair. The dryer won't dry when all the clothes are washed and wet. The baby bites the cat's tail and is scratched for it. Three-year-old dumps the tinker toys by the front door when you expect the minister to come by. The baby screams for attention. Soothing medications must be halted while mother sprints to a relentless doorbell. There stand two neighborhood children to report, Your baby is crying! Eight-year-old dashes in to say he forgot, but it is his turn to take cookies to his meeting today. Fingerprints all over the house loom suddenly vivid. The ragged edge of the rug seems suddenly dreadful. Three-year-old won't go outside. Cat won't come inside. The gelatin won't gel. The sun won't shine. The stew sticks and the pudding boils over while the phone rings on and on and on. And with it and above it, all through it all comes. Mommy, come and see. Mommy, come and see. Incessantly, incessantly, monotonously, unendingly from the three-year-old. Mother leans chin on the broom handles and mutters, Next time I'll raise chickens, Lord. Children are just too much. The ten-year-old crashes in, rough and ready, old boy, to confide. Mommy, at Cub Scout meeting, we had to list the five things most precious to us, and I did. One is God. Two is mother and father. Three is American. Four is babies. And five is sunsets. Suddenly, the baby's eyes seem very blue. Six-year-old recites from memory the entire 23rd Psalm, which is better than spelling what. Fingerprints retreat again. Daddy walks in. Really, life could not be richer. It is a glory never to be bartered. Finally, she says, Dear Lord, keep the chickens. I'll carry on for now. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. You see, mothers are so resourceful. They literally just keep doing and doing over and over. And they think only of others and rarely of themselves. They see things that others will never see. They do things that most don't even know need to be done. They are the true heroes. We go from resourcefulness next to something that I think is so important. And this really, really is something that we all need to do. So if you've checked out at all, this is the time to come back. And that's recognition. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. It also says, honor thy father and thy mother. Husbands should honor their wives. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, the first part of this verse, it says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to your wife. The Bible also says in Ephesians chapter 5 that let each one of you love his wife as himself. I believe that God's area of accountability for a husband begins in his home with the wife, the mother of his children. Before your career, before your church involvement, before anything else, the wife is to be the center of your attention. I hope you will make much of this day, Mother's Day, but really, it's not about today. It should be about every day. How easy is it for us men to sometimes forget important days of the year? If you want to get in really big trouble, forget a birthday or an anniversary or a day like Mother's Day. I saw this story and I thought I'd share it today. It says, one morning as a woman woke up and saw her husband getting ready to leave for work, she said with a big smile on her face, honey, I'll bet you don't know what today is. Her husband had a hard time remembering birthdays and anniversaries after all. But since he was about to leave for work, he excused himself from the embarrassing situation by walking out the door while saying, honey, how could I ever forget? 
This is the best day of our lives. All during the day, he kept trying to remember what month and what day his wife's birthday was and when their anniversary was, but he just could not remember. The day wore on and it was getting close to time to get off from work and he knew he was going to have to go home and face his wife not knowing what made this day so special. He finally thought of a plan to save his hide. He rushed into the house and he said, Honey, get your best dress on. We're going to go paint the town and celebrate this outstanding day in our lives. While she was getting ready, he rushed down to the florist and bought her a lovely bouquet of flowers. He took her to the most expensive restaurant in town. He had spent $150 to celebrate this day, and he still didn't even know what he was celebrating. It was on the way home that he finally discovered what day it was. His wife snuggled real close to him, placed her arm around his shoulder, planted a soft kiss on his cheek, and said, Honey, this is the best Groundhog Day we have ever enjoyed together. Now on a more serious note, what does it really mean to honor our wives, to give them that proper recognition? Let me begin by saying the recognition is not just for one day of the year, but for every day of the year. Honoring your wife means many things. It means loving her, providing for her, leading her in spiritual matters, helping with the kids, making life a little easier for her. I don't really think God is pleased when we spend the day enjoying our favorite hobby while the wife cleans the house and bathes the kids. Now, certainly that could happen sometimes, but it probably shouldn't happen all the time. I don't believe God is pleased when we spend money on ourselves and for our own pleasure while leaving the wife in the dress that we bought her two years ago, or maybe that we didn't really buy her at all, that she made herself. Today, husbands, we give honor to the mother of our children, but let us do it not let us do it in deed and not in word only. Secondly, children, you're not off the hook here either, because the Bible certainly says the children are supposed to honor their mothers as well. So let me speak to our kids for a moment. Teenagers and young people, let me ask you, do you give your mother the proper respect and honor that she deserves? I don't mean just today on Mother's Day. I mean yesterday, last week, all throughout the year. Maybe that time when she told you no, or maybe in the multiple times that she told you no. If your mom was asked to come and share with us a testimony about your respect and love for her, what would she say? Some of your mothers might even lie for you here. But what would she really be thinking and feeling? Would you make her proud? Or would she be embarrassed and not be able to say anything positive? Let me leave you with this thought. You only have one mother. You'll never have another. Love her and respect her and obey her while she is here. To start wrapping up here today, I'm going to read a poem to you that I found. It's an anonymous poem. I do not know who wrote this, but I think it's very fitting. It says this, If you have a smile for mother, give it now. If you have a kindly word, speak it now. She'll not need it when the angels greet her at the golden gate. Give the smiles while she's living, because if you wait, it will be too late. If you have a flower for mother, pluck it now. Place it gently on her bosom. Print a kiss upon her brow. What cares she when life is over for the flowers that bloom below? She will have her share up yonder, scattered at her feet galore. Mothers are truly special. They are true heroes. And they deserve recognition for all the things that they do, especially the ones that no one sees. Thank you, mothers. We love you. We cherish you. And we'll do our best to honor you, not just today, but every day. And when we forget, and we will, we thank you in advance for your amazing forgiveness and understanding, because you do truly care. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for mothers. We thank you for all the mothers out there. We thank you for the very first mother in Eve that was the seed. We thank you for other mothers of the Bible, like Jochebed, who was the mother of Moses, who had to put him in a basket just to keep him safe. We thank you for Hannah, who prayed and prayed and prayed for a child and dedicated him to you for all of his days. Father, we thank you for Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, who in a very difficult circumstance took on your charge to carry the Savior into this world. Father, we thank you for all of our mothers. Some of us still have our mothers and some of us don't. We thank you for all the ones that have been before. We thank you for all the ones that we have now. We thank, thank you for all the mothers that are going to be. 
And Father, we thank you for the great hearts that you've given them and the great task and the challenges that you've given them. And Father, we thank you that they succeed in so many ways in those challenges and those tasks. Help us all to honor them. Help us all to help them. Help us all to be the kind of people that you would want us to be. We pray this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen.